Hi everyone, thanks for having me here today. So usually I tend to have like 45 minute sessions for BTM. We have 20 minutes now, so please bear with me. It's gonna be a fast forward one. Today I want to take a closer look at the BTM module. And we will cover three topics, which is the first one, um, the planning of high level scenarios. And that includes how well you can drive change with strategic objectives uh, within BTM how we can identify needs for transformations and how we can model and visualize high-level changes. In the second part of today's session, we will talk about decision-making and how you can make data-driven decisions upon detailed scenario that you modeled with BTM. We want to look at how we can compare and choose ideal plans, how we can model out those plans and all of those impacts, um, and we want to visualize low-level architectural changes. And in the end, of course, we need to look at the execution of such plans or scenarios, how we can keep track, how we can apply changes to the architecture, and how we can track progress across all the different initiatives. But first, let's have a look at the extended data model that uh, Andre presented already today. So I want to introduce the two new factory types that BTM brings into your workspace. The first one is the objective, and the objective can be used to actually um, define strategic goals to improve the business. So it allows high-level tracking, uh, progress tracking, it helps you identify critical business capabilities, um, and it enables org-wide transparency of all the ongoing initiatives within your organization, which uh, is, is a great, great thing. The second fact sheet type is the transformation item, and you can leverage it to create detailed plans to achieve the objectives that you've uh, formulated, that you have created. Within the transformation items, you can define impacts of those different scenarios. You can do high-level planning with plans and building blocks, and you can do very detailed planning by leveraging projects and epics as categories of transformation items. Let's first start with a very easy example. So um, we have a sentence where, well, company A wants to move their internal applications into the cloud by 2022 to increase the AT efficiency by 20%. If we take that sentence, we would, well, match the transformation item plan to moving internal applications into the cloud as we have a defined end state and we have a timeline, whereas the business objective is increasing IT efficiency by 20%. And to achieve that, well, we first need to somehow map the affected business capability to the objective to understand where in your organization you're following a certain goal. And in the second step, we need to define plans to achieve those objectives and in the next step, you have to model all the impacts on the affected applications or IT components, um, text, text, data objects, so everything that your scenario in the end is going to change. In the fourth step, we want to visualize a plan based on multiple dimensions. We want to visualize plans based on time, on cost, or on context. And in the end, of course, you need to decide, you need to execute, execute on a plan and track progress of initiatives and objectives. So let's start with the planning of high-level scenarios. So what does drive transformation? Well, usually it's strategic objectives that drive transformation within organizations. And the objective itself mostly it has a very descriptive nature. So you have a nice headline, you have some descriptive text. Um, but in Nina X, it also has a life cycle to cover historic or coverage of all the objectives that you've been working on. It has a status to understand where am I in reaching this objective and of course, it has a number of relations that are important to bring context into the objective, which is hierarchical order, and of course, the relation to the business capability to understand where in your architecture are you trying to achieve that objective. And we can leverage that relation to the business capability to bring up a heat map um, uh, of objectives to understand where in your architecture um, are you heavily changing things, where you do you have a number of, uh, of strategic goals. And we identify these hotspots by simply looking at like, the number of items that you have in a certain business capability. And in this case, well, there is a lot of, um, of stuff ongoing within the legal business capability. So let's stick to that high level of business capabilities and have a look at the business capability map. In here, I can identify that legal is a, a strategic tier one importance business capability, so it is very important. But it has, well, a current maturity of level two, which is, well, not great, so you have to improve it. And if you're asking yourself, 
How you can do it, let me show that to you. So we now have the objective, and then, of course, we have the new transformation item, the, the fact sheet. And if we go to the inventory, we can see that the transformation item has a number of categories. And I want to introduce the first two, the plan and the building block, where the plan is like the scenario, the bracket that holds everything that's within that plan together. It also holds the time frame, time frame of that plan and some descriptive properties um, to later uh, do scenario comparison, understand what's, what's the priority, what's the needed investment size. So if you have multiple scenarios, it's very easy to make decisions. The second transformation item is the building block. And with the building block, well, we express a high-level package of functionality that needs to be delivered. And it, this one is actually the first one to hold impacts. So let's go back to the use case, to the legal business capability. We said we wanted to increase the maturity of that business capability. And we can do that by leveraging well, the building block that I just described. So you see it has a number of properties. What's the investment size? What's business value? What's the risk? What's the timeline and what's the relation or what are the relations? And we can see it has impacts on both um, legal business capabilities. And now let's have a look at the impact and let's well, create the impact. We decided we want to somehow increase the maturity and we can model that as a change that is supposed to happen directly um, on that high level building block. So I select the fact sheet or the business capability I want to improve, and I select the operation I want to make, I want to set the field, I can even see the current value in here, and I can, well, make that change, or not make that change, I can model that change that I want to make. And you can see there is quite a number of different, well, operations that you can do, and you can actually change anything within your workspace. So now that we modeled that change, we kind of have like a first scenario. It's a small one, but it is a scenario. So let's have a look what we can do with this impact. If we jump over to um, the first report that I want to show, which is the business capability map again, you can see that well, there is something up there, which is the plan picker. And in here, I can now select a plan and automatically we project all the impacts that we modeled onto your current architecture and show you the state of your architecture at the end of the plan. Of course, I can jump into each of those interval steps within the plan to see how it evolves over time. So that is a, is a very, very powerful um, tool to model changes and then project them into the future. So we have our first scenario. Let's quickly summarize. So BTM enables you to do need identification within your architecture, understand where you have needs to change, to transform. You can address gaps with transformation items and impacts, and it allows you to create high-level scenarios to support business objectives. Let's now talk about how you can decide, how you can make data-driven decisions. BTM comes with a number of different reports, and I want to highlight a few of them here. So as I said, only have 20 minutes, there would be more, but let's stick to those three for now. The first new report I want to introduce is the transformation cost report. And with the transformation cost report, you actually can gain insights on the actual cost of each of the scenario and understand where each dollar spent or where, where each dollar is spent into single transformation items, but also whole scenarios. So it's easy to understand where the money that to spend on a scenario is going to be invested in. The second report is the investment distribution. And it it's, lets you easily identify how the cost of all transformation items is distributed across your strategic objectives. So you can see if you're investing into the right objectives or if you're investing into objectives that don't have a priority. And the last one I want to highlight today is the transformation item portfolio report, which can help you to easily identify high-risk items within your plan or low-hanging fruits that you might want to focus on. So let's go over to the creation of a granular plan. Let's assume that you created a scenario. And well, you're similar to management like that scenario, but they're saying before you get the funding, you have to plan it out completely. And that's what I want to do right now. So we were looking at the business capability legal that we want to increase the maturity. 
And now we want to like model all the low-level changes that we need to make in the architecture to actually increase the business capability maturity. And we can do that by leveraging the project fact sheet type or the epic fact sheet type, depending on if you're an agile uh, company or if you're more traditional approach. And we now are looking at a project fact sheet where I want to replace an application that I have with a SaaS solution. And you saw the project also holds descriptive information like what's the priority, what's the risk, what's the needed investment size. But it also holds all the impacts that I need to actually change my architecture on a, on a lower level. So in here I can see when this project is going to be finished, I will have a new application called Digilex 2.0 it will have a relation to my legal business capability. It will copy all the relations to user groups from like the old application that I'm going to replace. I'll set the lifecycle to active. I'll well, do the uh, predecessor relation to Lex Actual, and I set the functional fit to appropriate. And of course, while I'm replacing an application, so Lex Actual has to go end of life, and I'm removing the relations to business capability of that application. So now I've modeled a project and I have like an, a building block, but what if I want to understand what are all the things that will affect me in my domain or um, affect me as a, as a project manager? And for that, we can leverage reporting again. And now we're looking at the transformation item landscape and I'm looking at all the projects that, well, I'm responsible for. But of course, I can also look at um, all the initiatives that are going on within the organization. So I have gained insights into what's going on in the whole organization, which, which is of great value because you can easily understand what's the plan for next year, what are all the items, which ones have high priority, low priority, which ones are the big things that you have to invest into. But I'm, now that we're seeing, well, I have a number of projects, but I don't have a timeline. Well, with BTM, you do have a timeline, and I want to introduce the transformation roadmap report that you can leverage to actually put all the items that you have onto a timeline. So you can understand when a transformation item will start, when it will end. You can analyze dependencies, dependency violations, and we think that this, this report is going to be one key planning instrument um, for roadmap planning with Linux. But now that we understand, well, the timelines, when certain things are going to be implemented and finished, well, let's have a look at how that actually affects my architecture. And now we're jumping into the application landscape, and you see the similar box again. It's the plan picker where you can now select a certain scenario, and you will see all the lower-level archi architectural changes on the application landscape that will happen as part of that plan. And again, of course, I can see all the interval steps. I can go to uh, have a look at well, how's my, uh, my architecture going to look in, in January, February, March, April, or at the end of the plan. So let's summarize again. BTM enables you to break down high-level scenarios into detailed plans, to model any change on the architecture as impact, and I repeat, any change, and to visualize impact as projections on the current architecture leaves us one last topic for today, which is execution and keeping track of all the things that are going on within your, your, your organization. And to come into the execution phase, let's time warp now into uh, 2021. Let's assume that we stick to the plan that we created. We decided to invest into the scenario. And now we're kind of like in the middle of implementing that scenario. So first thing that I want to understand is what's the state of my objectives? And I'm jumping back to objective landscape, where I now see all the objectives clustered by business capabilities, and I can easily identify, well, for my legal business capabilities, two objectives are reached, I'm good, but there's still one that you have to work on. So that's the one I have to concentrate on. I can quickly see what's the state of all objectives within my architecture. And of course, we can do the same thing also if we look, go back to a project or transformation item level. In addition, on the uh, landscape, I can, of course, switch the clustering from business capability to the actual parent, so I see all the objectives within the organization. 
and I can track the state across my initiatives. So again, I'm seeing all the projects that affect me and my domain. And if I, for example, go into the actual state, so what's the life cycle, I can see that the project is finished. It's implemented. And now comes the interesting part. Now we can talk about execution of impacts. So I've modeled a change that's not part, not persisted within my architecture. But now I want to implement that change because, well, the project has been finished. And we can do that very easily by going back to the impacts tab. And you might have seen the button earlier. There is a prepare execution button. I just press it. I double check that all the items are still relevant. I press execute. And that's it. That's how you execute uh, changes that you've modeled within your architecture. And now these are persisted in your inventory. So they are, these are your current state of the architecture. All right, let's summarize one last time. BTM enables you to keep track of strategic objectives and their execution. And in, well, it enables you to execute impacts respecting the timeline of all the transformation items. Before I leave the stage, I wanted to share some feedback that we received during the beta phase. So please enjoy. And I hope the video works. We see that there's lineage from the objective to someone doing a subtask in JIRA. You can roll up, okay, I'm doing a subtask in JIRA for that the initiative that is linked to this uh, transformation item that is linked to this objective. The sequence diagram, I'm, I can't wait to see it evolve, but yeah, the, the sequence diagram also will be really, really helpful. The way it's designed, it was easy to bring in the objective, the plans, the transformation item. It, it makes sense just to have called it transformation item. It makes it easy for business people to say, we work, been working them for years, understanding it well, for a year, understanding the business capability. And now we're just saying, well, it's easy. We talked to you about the business capability. Now you have transformation item to bring the maturity of that business capability higher. Iron management, the dictating the, the objectives, the alignment, then having all the value chain, all the leaders uh, using Lean IX to plan and to have visibility on how much money they would, if they are, they, they want to achieve the transformation for, for next year. It's not too complicated. The four level, a plan, a business, a building block project, uh, epic. This is uh, really easy to, to, to integrate in the, the vocabulary of our teams. Great product, great product. And at that point, I wanted to say thank you to the whole team that put a tremendous effort into that module over the past year. Uh, across the whole organization, Alina X, so that was, was great, thank you for that. And special thanks to all the participants of the beta phase that really helped us to discover the real value in all the little things that we were working on. And special thanks to Kerfala from NBC um, that we could share his feedback in here. And before I leave the stage, I see you clapping almost, sorry. Um, we have a great white paper on the, on the website. If you want to see more, know more about BTM, do not hesitate to go to the website, sign up for a demo, contact me, go to Slack, use the chat. We're like omni-channel. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Johannes.